And we're back with the breakfast and plus TV Africa. It's time for us to go through a second conversation. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, on Tuesday expressed concern over the spate of violence at the ongoing electioneering campaign. The commission said it would summon leaders of political parties participating in the 2023 general elections over the threat of violence uh, that has happened. Now, INEC Chairman Momoji Yokobu raised concern at the training of master trainers on technologies for the 2023 general elections in Abuja. This came shortly after the People's Democratic Party PDP campaign was attacked by suspected thugs in Kaduna State. Describing the development as worrisome, Yokobu cautioned parties and their supporters to focus on issue and stay away uh, of attacks on each other. Uh, the Violent acts were not only violation of the Electoral Acts of 2022, but also it negates the voluntary commitment by political parties and candidates to the letter, or the letter and the spirit of peace accord. Uh, this is this is the thoughts of the chairman. He also acknowledged reports of clashes among parties and their supporters in some states of the country during the ongoing electioneering campaign, which he described as worrisome. So too is the report's uh, denial of access to public facilities for parties and candidates in some states of the Federation. He also said that there's need to caution parties and their supporters to focus on issues uh, like it was rightly mentioned and stay away from attack on each other. Each other. These are not only the violation of the Electoral Act of 2022, but also uh, it negates the commitment by political parties and candidates to the letter and spirit of peace accord which was signed about three weeks ago under the auspices of the national peace committee we have uh, ambrose Ikboke who joins the conversation is a public affairs analyst ambrose it's good to have you join us this morning uh, good morning good morning for having me yes please uh why do we still have you know, this kind of politicking or campaigning uh, that's uh, characterized by violence and uh, contrary to the Electoral Act, even when you have this political leaders signing a peace accord? Well, first of all, Nigeria has had a very, you know, sad history when it comes to electioneering. After the independence in 1960, where the major political crisis that happened, happened in 1964, uh, in the action group election to the Western House of Parliament, between the Akitola and the Olo Wars group, and that led to what we call the Operation Wet Year, which was uh, a precursor to the uh, January 15, 1966 group. Because it was that election, Western Regional Election of 1964, that cascaded into the violence that engulfed the Western Region, that later made the declaration of emergency there, and that made the military voice come to say that the politicians cannot take care of the country. So, you know, we cannot allow those kind of mistakes to continue. 1979 saw his own fashion of violence. Where you know electoral buses uh, were voting buses were snatched, all kinds of uh, insults out at each other, people lost their lives. In fact, it was so infamous that we could not determine what was to thought, and they were to go to the courts. You know, it was it was always messy. And then when we came, the only election we saw a respite was the 1993 June 12th election that seemed to have, when the Professor Humphrey was who, the chairman then of the electoral body, brought the option A4. And it worked wonderfully at that time. And we didn't have rancor. The election was also declared almost, and then it was completed by the IDB regime. Now, when we resumed democracy in 1999, um, we were just in a hurry for the military to go. So election was just done, conducted, and then. But the first test of our election was 2003 in this dispensation. 
there were lots of violence. In fact, a statement was credited to the former head of state, uh, the police of Bassanger, that the election was there to do a affair, that the election was war. So that kind of mindset would have been militarized. We are, our psyche was that of winner takes it all. Was not that there's no benevolence of the winner and there was no, you know, sportsman spirit of the loser. That is the mindset we come to politics with. We come to politics, of course, every politician comes to win it, but not win it by all, at all costs. That is what the Nigerian politician mindset is made of. But we saw that change in the year 2015. For the first time in a long while, we saw an incumbent president who made the famous statement that the ambition, that his ambition as a politician is not worth the blood of any Nigerian. And that was uh, uh, Dr. Goodluck and Bella Jonathan. For singular action of, of his, in his philosophy, that is what election is supposed to be. Uh, okay, we apologize for that. But if you're there and you can hear me, um, I mean, the politicians, um, it, some studies have, have said, some reports, you know, um, think tanks have come up with their analysis. That if you look at all of this, the uh, accusing finger always points back at the politician. And you rightly talked about some of the rhetoric of politicians in times past, like the do or die affair, uh, famous um, uh, statement by a former president of the country. Um, recently, there was a peace accord signed by the 18 political parties contesting the presidential election uh, in 2023. Um, this was done at the uh, International Conference Center in Abuja, midwife by the National Peace Committee. But with the signing of this electoral, uh, this peace pact, or this peace accord, we're still seeing uh, hearing reports, like uh, the INEC chairman has said, of violence amongst uh, political parties and their supporters, most recently in Kaduna State, where some PDP supporters were attacked. Uh, why do we still have the politicians uh, signing a peace pact and peace accord yet? will continue to have violent situations in our polity. Uh, Mr. Iboke, do we still have you? Yeah, we have me. Yes. You know, what we still have is that these political actors are still in the political space. So they still see this election as they do that. Remember that even uh, General Muhammad Buhari, in one of the elections, I think 2007 or 2011, they made the internal statement about baboons to be soaked in blood. You remember that statement? Yeah, but Mr. Okay, Ibuke, the reason I'm asking is so, they, they signed the peace accord just last month, late last, not even up to one month. They signed the peace accord. So what's going on? So what's going on is that we need to, they need to, maybe we need to bring Van Jonathan to talk to them on how, as a sitting and incumbent president, he gave up. You know, he didn't contest the result of the election. He, co he called the winner to congratulate him. Maybe he should come and suit all these frontline political actors on how to go about this thing. And then the supporters are the most dangerous set of people. The political actors themselves are very, very convivial with each other. They are friends, actually. They are, they are, they are, they are, they are sitting together. They are dying together. But it's the politicians that actually, uh, is a political... Uh, associates and followers that are always a dagger drawn. So, for example, we saw the video yesterday of uh, 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 uh Balatinubu and uh, Elijah Tukabubaka meeting at the airport and chatting, and that is how they are. All of them are friends, they are only elites. So, this is a common man that has violence that my support, my, my principal is higher than yours, and they start this thing. So, the Political actors, the candidates, should start talking to their, to their followers. That it is not a do or die affair. The followers are supposed to monitor the election, marshal out the, the point or the, the, the strength of your candidates to ensure that they sell their candidates to Nigeria. And not this violence. We saw the, okay, we saw the, the violence in different forms. There is the administrative violence where you deny access we have a certain of, uh, of the opponents for public user utilities. 
right. and the, the, the candidates of other political parties are also citizens, or indigenous of the state, and you are denying them. Why should you do that? We have reports from Lagos that uh, uh, Lhasa is denying uh, other political parties from advertising on uh, outdoors of the box. And that's as a concrete because actually when you drive through Lagos, you hardly see any opposition on the board. And there was a phone, uh, a phone conversation that leaked over some two, two months ago that exactly solidified that. And yet, the government has denied it. But again, we are not seeing it. So these are other forms of political violence. All right, Ambrose Igboke, we have to go now, and that's because we're really out of time, but we appreciate you and your thoughts this morning on the show. Thank you for having me. Well, we have been speaking with Ambrose Igboke. He is a public affairs analyst who joins us right here in Lagos uh, via a phone conversation. That's the size of it. We will return tomorrow, hopefully, and uh, it would be great, great uh, lineup for us uh, if you missed that on any part of it, it will be all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and do subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Boko. Have a fantastic morning. And uh, my name is Kofi Bartels. So we'll return with more programming tomorrow, which happens to be 20th of October uh, 2022, uh, the second anniversary of the Lekki and Saza killings. I'm sure we'll have an interesting one. So please join us again tomorrow morning. <laughs>